August 1st, 2009, I was on safari with my wife and daughters in uh, Tanzania uh, in the Serengeti. And actually, we had uh, been on a safari with them for about three days in the last few days of July, mm. uh, where you're going to drive around in a Range Rover and look at uh, all the animals. And they got bored of that and wanted to take a day off. And one of the uh, amenities that they featured at this uh, facility was, which was kind of a private encampment, um, was a walking safari. So I asked the guide if we could take a walking safari tomorrow. And he said, no problem, Mr. Siebel, meet me for breakfast at 6.30. And I don't know if you've ever been to the Serengeti, but it's no. basically high desert and it's, it, 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 there's no relief, really no trees, no hills, some scrubs and some occasional mud hill, holes where the animals congregate. And uh, he explained to me that um, I would be carrying, I was gonna carry, I was armed with a Nikon uh, single lens reflex <laughs> camera. And, I thought you were uh, going to say Bushmaster was with him. And he but. was going to be armed with a uh, double barrel 470 rifle. Oh, okay. Well, a 470 rifle has a charge about the size of a roll of dimes. And he explained to me that it was very important that if we were charged by an animal, that I not run, because if I run, if I ran, uh, we were going to be hurt. So we walked out at daybreak, and it was uh, not a breath of wind. And we went for about 15 minutes. We came upon a herd of uh, elephant. And there were 15 of them, uh, adults and juveniles, in a stand of trees about 200 meters away, mm. kind of peeling branches away the way they do. And we stood there and watched them in this for about seven minutes. And then all of a sudden, this one matriarch, um, a very large female elephant, got wind, some of the wind must have shifted or something, and she saw us and went back on her haunches and her trunk went up and her ears went back and she bellowed and then all of a sudden focused at us since this elephant starts taking a beeline at us. Mm -hmm. at, uh, so this is five tons moving at 30 miles an hour. Whew. So it'll cover 200 yards pretty quickly. Yeah. And so standing in front of me is the guide with his loaded double barrel 470 rifle. And the elephant comes up, you know, 150 yards, 100 yards, guy doesn't shoot. 80 yards, 70 yards, 60 yards, dies, guy doesn't shoot. You know, 40 yards, 30 yards, 20 yards. About this time, it started to get a bit concerning. Yeah. And the guy doesn't shoot. Well, the guy just shot at 10 yards and missed. And an elephant oh. at 10 yards is the size of the wall of this conference room. I don't imagine at 10 yards shooting the elephant would have done much anyway. Well, it would have dropped in in its tracks. I mean, a 470 rifle will drop an elephant in its tracks yeah. at 100 yards. And uh, anyhow, the elephant came up and then took the guide and just curled the guide about, I would say, almost 15 yards, just tossed him. Wow. And then ran up and stopped in front of me. And so meanwhile, I'm not running. You're not gonna outrun it into one of these things anyway. They could run at 30 miles an hour and stopped 18 inches from my face. This is five tons of elephant. And to this minute, I can see it, I can smell it, I can see the tusk, the hair follicle, the, the hoof, uh, the eyeball. And uh, so I'm standing my ground and it was like, the, you know, we had a little mental exchange. I was like, okay, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> and then- the how, I mean, I know it probably seems like five minutes, but how long was that pause, you think? Maybe three seconds. Three seconds, and it's very surreal because you don't really have a place in your brain to put an elephant. Okay, you oh, mean right. there's, there's not a you know there's no context for that. So you're off in a it's a very surreal space, and things move very very slowly. And then the elephant proceeds to knock me to the ground and roll me and punch me, and I took a tusk through one leg, Oof. and the elephant stepped on my other leg, and my foot came off. And meanwhile, I'm just kind of holding my head while I'm being rolled and pushed and, 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 and basically attacked by this raging elephant, which was, um, you know, not my best day. And uh, the, you know, you can imagine the pain of being, you know, impaled by an elephant's tusk. I or can't. having your, you know, Leg stepped on. You say your my foot, foot came, came, came off. off my leg, yeah. And uh, it was still hanging on, but when we were done by, say, one artery, two tendons, and a flap of skin. Um, but you know, the hits were almost unimaginably painful, unimaginably painful. And I uh, remember thinking to myself, you know, dear God, make this stop. And I didn't really care how it stopped. I just couldn't do it anymore. It, it really hurt. 
Look up, dust has settled, elephant's gone. And uh, I'm critically injured. I look over and the guide is now about 18 yards away because I've been pushed around a little bit. You know, lying absolutely still, prone, on top of a loaded double barrel 470 rifle. So he knew I was dead and he didn't want the same fate. And he could have gotten off seven rounds in this period of time. Mm. So then they uh, surrounded me, he got on a radio, they surrounded me up by a, hurt, by a number of trucks so that no more animals got in. And I lay there for uh, three and a half hours in the Serengeti with my one leg flayed open, my other leg, the foot detached, and um, went from there to a pickup truck, pickup truck to a back of a Cessna, Cessna to Nairobi, had surgery in Nairobi, you want to be scared? <laughs> Have surgery in Nairobi. And that airlifted. You, uh, you drew the long straw and got a good doctor in Nairobi? I survived. And uh, did get a blood transfusion. And uh, arrived. Did not get a blood did transfusion. Did not get it. Right. Because of a mistake, actually. Mm-hmm. And um, they then I airlifted to San Jose, California. 20-hour flight. They had 10 hours of morphine. So the last 10 hours, were, I took maybe all the morphine in Kenya and with me. And... Uh, it was, uh, the last 10 hours were pretty long. And the next three years, I had 19 reconstructive surgeries. Um, at one point, I weighed 121 pounds. I was in an electric wheelchair, mm. uh, like, kind of like a paraplegic. Yeah. And then three years later, I walked. And uh, now I'm back 100%. Anyway, this is my leg. This, there's, you know, there's nothing artificial about it. And uh, it just took a lot of surgeries to get it right. And I would go visit physicians and they would explain that they're going to have to remove my leg and I'd say okay you're fired <laughs> and then I'd go you know and I kept going through physicians until somebody um, I was you know persistent about it and uh, I'm very fortunate 